Hello, good people. This is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker, coming back at you live once again from the Lone Star State with another edition of the Media Mike Speaks. All right, good people. It is six minutes past the hour, and yes, we are the voice of the everyday citizen. And all right, good people, yes, and uh, someone needs to be the voice of this town in Mason, Tennessee. And this is a majority African-American town, just in case you have or have not heard. It is lately been poised, it was lately poised to be benefit from a massive investment from Ford Motor Company and has at this point been taken over by the state's comptroller. Now, this is a pretty much predominantly uh, African-American town. Just in case you did not know, I lived in Jackson, Tennessee, not too far from there for about four years, 1995 uh, to 1999. So this place is a little bit uh, past Germantown, right outside of Memphis. And it has about 1,500 residents. Most of its elected officials are black and members of the Democratic Party. Don't know if that's a good thing. In stark contrast with the mostly white and Republican-controlled Tipton County government, as well as Tennessee Comptroller Jason Mum Power, who on Tuesday took the step of seizing control of the town of Mason's finances. So here we go, good people. Here we go. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's usually usually the case, but this is not one of them. Now, Mum Power's power grab comes after he he'd given Mason's government a choice between relinquishing its charter, essentially giving away control of the town to Tipton County or having him step in and assume control of the municipality's budget and spending powers. So at this point, pretty much, the residents of the town of Mason are caught between two guns, good people. That's really what this is. Now, according to the Tennessee Lookout, a local government watchdog website, Mum Power says the move was necessary to address financial mismanagement in Mason. But you see, the city elected officials aren't, aren't so sure about that because they have pushed back on this assessment. Now, the town ended up in a half million dollar financial hole caused in large part by fraud and embezzlement during prior administrations. I know what you're thinking, but this is not it. Now, a lot of the officials have been working hard to pay out the debt that was occurred by those previous administrators. Now, the town is questioning why did Mr. Mumpower, he and his, you know, band of cronies, why didn't they intervene before now? Most likely because they all know each other, allegedly. Now, this small town, good people, still serves as the home to descendants of freed slaves. And wait for it, wait for it. Now, it was led by white officials for more than half a century. You see, the town's first black mayor, good people, uh, Gwen Kilpatrick, no relations to Kwame Kilpatrick, I hope not, out of, uh, I think, Detroit, assumed office in 2015 after allegations of fraud and mismanagement led to the resignations of nearly all city hall officials get this good people and they were all white they were all Caucasian yes the ones who messed up the money were not African Americans they were Caucasians now since that time Mason's residents have elected black officials their current mayor vice mayor and five of its six aldermen are African Americans now the automotive giant Ford is planning to invest a reported $5.6 billion in a massive new electric vehicle and battery facility dubbed Blue Over City, which will sit just four miles from Mason. According to the Tennessee Lookout story, the main highway between Memphis and Blue Over City, as well as a rail line and other critical infrastructure run right through Mason. Now that puts Mason likely on the cusp of a huge windfall in tax and development revenues, none of which its elected mayor or city council will control with Mr. Mumpower in charge. See, the fix is in, good people. 
The situation call, uh, recalls other incidents of white officials moving to take control of municipal spending from black ones. You see, good people, here's the question. This is my thing here. When will African Americans learn? How did first this city's finances get controlled by all Caucasian people? Which goes to show that it's not just African Americans that aren't good with money. So we we can debunk that theory that Caucasians are better managers of money. See. But hence in the description, uh, this predominantly African American town is on the verge of being taken over financially by I would presume uh a predominantly Caucasian organization without even firing a shot. You see, there are no more burning down of all African American towns and cities, such as Rosewood, Florida, Black Wall Street, and Oklahoma, and the riots of 1919. Now, back to the question at hand, good people. How did this happen? How could this happen? How did they, meaning Caucasians, get control to where now the African Americans now have to regain control for fear of losing all that's what's left of that is authentic? I don't understand this. Hashtag save Mason. And I hope it works out for them. Because I'm going to be fair here. And I'm going to tell it like it is. Someone fell asleep at the wheel. See, we, you know, they trusted, I guess, that Caucasian administrators, the government to run the town, they ran it into the ground. Or did they do it on purpose? Things that make you go, hmm. Did they know this deal was coming? Did they know mum power, as I stated earlier? Things that make you go, hmm. But you see, this is what happens when you sleep and you're not in the know. That's what goes on. Stay woke, good people. Stay woke. I sure, once again, I hope it works out for them. So let me know what you think about this story, good people. Until next time, this is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night. They'll understand you soon, it won't be long. Keep on, keep on.